because the Chargers had another heartbreaking loss. This was heartbreaking. Questionable decisions that happened that game, but it was very heartbreaking. I don't know who wants to go first. If you guys want me to go first, it's whatever you guys want. I'll go. I'll go first. I think that. First of all, Justin Herbert looks spectacular again. Yeah, he, I mean, let's get that, kid, that kid is special. He's, I don't yeah. think there's any question about it. That's the QB. He has he has not faltered all season long, and, and he's played some really good competition. And even this week, this past week, I should say, against Derek Carr, who I know you'll talk about later in the show, it, the Raiders have been really good this season, really sneakily good this season. And he throws two perfect balls at the end. Both of them probably should have been caught and questionable play calling, he makes the throw that needs to be made, and they don't come down. His receivers don't come down with it. He did everything he could have possibly Absolutely. done, except go out and play safety for him. But you look at the Chargers this season; they're one in six in games decided by seven points or fewer. Um, this past week, they're missing Joey Bosa, who left with a concussion. He's their team sack leader, Uchenna and Wusu who is second on the team in sacks, only played six snaps in the whole game. How does that make sense? The Raiders are missing both of their starting offensive tackles. They had all the problems with the COVID list, losing their whole offensive line to the COVID list. And somehow, the Chargers didn't have a single tackle for loss, and they only had one sack. So how is it possible that you were playing a totally depleted offensive line, you're getting no pressure on the quarterback, Justin Herbert could be Superman, but at the end of the day, they're going out getting embarrassed on the other side of the ball. Granted, they've dealt with a lot of injuries. There's no reason they should not be winning a few of the football games they've been in. And you look at how many close games they've won. I, I think that Anthony Lynn's time is up in Los Angeles. Um, it's looking like it. Yo, Justin Herbert is special. Not denying that. He's very special. This guy is going to be there for you. This is, this is his franchise. It made the right decision. These guys are three and fifteen in one score games in the last two years. Three and fifteen. You want to talk about the defense? They've been banged up. Casey Hayward played yesterday. He was good yesterday. He was. Yeah, he you was. Think so? I he do. allowed ninety eight yards. Derek Carr had one hundred sixty five. The biggest I think thing. He was pretty the good biggest. Yesterday. The biggest piece that they're missing is Derwin James, which I mean, that's killed them the past two seasons that he hasn't been he's on been the hurt. field because he's a, he's arguably the best safety in the league. He's a game changing player, I agree. and that would be a huge piece for them to get back along with Joey Bosa, who's been dealing with injuries. So I give them some flexibility on that, but that is no excuse for. Like I mentioned, playing one of the worst offensive lines in the league. And their special teams hasn't week, been good either. Yeah, it, 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 it's bad. And you look at Anthony Lynn's coaching record. He was an offensive coordinator for one season before the Chargers hired him. And that was the Bills ranking 30th in the NFL in, in passing yards. So, like, I, I don't, I, I just don't think he's the guy here. I think he's a good leader. I think that with the right offensive and defensive coordinators, maybe he could work somewhere or in some role in, in a team. He's not the guy here. He's, is, he's not shown enough as a head coach for me to be confident in him. I like him, but he's just not a good fit in Los Angeles. I think it's also time to go. I think Anthony Lynn is inevitably the problem. I think they need to make some changes on that defense. And I think at the same time, they also do have to be healthy. But they're, they're going to be fine because they have a special quarterback. And when you have a special quarterback, everything always looks good. I know, you know, Jets fans, you don't understand that. But when you have a special guy at a quarterback – you're going to be good. So I think if they figure everything out on offense and defense, they get a coach in there that can really work the sidelines, I think they'll be okay eventually. And and we've had Charger fans in our comments the last two times we've spoken about them. They think the whole staff should be gone, with the exception of Pat Pat Hamilton. Hamilton and, and I saw one other coach that they were mentioning that they wanted to keep around. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but... Didn't one Chargers fan call us like an asshole or something? Yeah, because we said that we didn't know any Chargers fans. But what you have to realize is we live on the East Coast. This is what the Chargers I'll say. Not good, so. This is what I'll say to, about the Casey Hayward thing. From what I saw, I didn't think he was too bad. I thought Adderley was pretty bad. He let a lot of deep passes go by his way. But a problem with the Chargers that happened yesterday and has been happening throughout the year is clock management. Anthony Lynn... He's been bad with the clock management. I mean, at the end of the first half, it's all like a whole explanation to it. I really don't want to get into it, but they had three timeouts. They could have. They they were going to score. They were on their way to score. 
they run on first down twice, like inside zones. The, I, they love that play. Inside <laughs> zones. They didn't call a timeout, and it really dwindled the clock down. I think they still ended up scoring that drive, but it wasn't about the result. It was about how you manage the clock, and that came back to bite them at the end of the game. Yeah. But the one key word that I can come up with when I see the Chargers play is mistakes, and those mistakes often, rarely – Never have to do with Justin Herbert. Like, yeah. these are big mistakes. I'll just talk about the first one. These are all in the second half. Mike Williams, the first big mistake of the second half. It happened in the third quarter. The The Chargers were trailing the Raiders 28-17. to 17. Justin Herbert throws a perfect ball to Mike Williams, which it looks like a corner route. Mike Williams drops the ball. It could have been 28-24. to 24. Instead, they had to settle for a field goal that drive. It becomes 28 to 28 to 20. Then in the fourth quarter, Justin Herbert touchdown pass to Gabe Neighbors. Have you guys heard about him? Gabe Neighbors? You guys know him? No. Barely. Yeah, he throws to random receivers all the time. This is <laughs> this is a thing. He can't he he came in for somebody. I think he did, yeah. Yeah. He threw a touchdown to him. 28 to 26. Tyrod Taylor comes in to do the second point conversion, the two-point conversion. And it was a weird play. It was like a boot play. I don't know what it is with the Chargers goal line play calling, but it's really iffy. Mm -hmm. They do like a boot action play. That was the play that that was the play after Justin Herbert got mm -hmm. hurt, right? And want to know what's the weirdest thing about this is if the Chargers were to call a timeout, he could have played. Justin Herbert could have been in that play. And me, just how he's been playing, I'd rather have Justin Herbert have that play. And it's, it's and Tyrod Taylor. It's the fourth quarter. Like I love Tyrod Taylor, and I think Anthony Lynn. Loves him too, and that's why he was a little bit too attached to him and thought about, yeah, just let him go out there. Let it's not like it. they used those timeouts too wisely at the end either. You know, it, it was mistakes all around, like you mentioned. And they were also missing Justin mm -hmm. Jackson too but, since the first quarter, yep. who was their lead back. And Kalen Balaj had he the was most good. snaps for them. He was good. Which, he as, was good. as well as he played, that's a problem if Kalen Balaj is getting the most snaps at running I back. Thought, I thought he was explosive yesterday, but this is the other big mistake 28 to 26. Chargers need a stop. A defense that hasn't come in clutch for the Chargers all year. They get the stop. Mm. The Raiders punt it. It's muffed. <laughs> it's muffed by this guy named Hill Jr. I don't know his first name, but it's muffed by him. KJ Hill. KJ Hill. It's muffed by him. Now the Raiders are in field goal range. The score is now 31-26, to which is the only reason why the Chargers had to go and score a touchdown. If it wasn't for that, they would have won off a field goal. So uh, now, he might have missed. So yeah, he's not a very yeah. he's a very inaccurate kicker. But now on the final drive, the two plays that were supposed to be touchdown plays, the one of Mike Williams, it was a goal line fade. He drops it. The next one, it was to Perham. I think that's his name, like Donald Perham, something like that. Mm -hmm. Parham. Goal line fade. He drops it. I'm not I'm not disappointed by the drops. I'm disappointed that the two plays to win you a game was a goal line fade. Mike Williams, I'm fine with slightly, but not to par him. <laughs> I like I like goal line fades. I just think they're they're one of. It's, I hate that play in the goal line. Yeah, even give it with to, Mike give Williams. It to I, hate it, I hate it, but at the same time, certain people I'll be okay yeah, with. If it. you're telling me you're lining up DeAndre Hopkins or like Julio, Julio Jones, yeah, Devontae right, Adams, right, right. like. That I understand, but when you're throwing it to even Mike Williams doesn't really get a pass for me. That's not a guy that yeah. you, you throw up a 50-50 ball and I trust coming down in, with in it. In the fourth? It, it's totally forget the, the final play of the game. Yeah. It was one second left. <laughs> yeah, no, we're gonna do on something. We're gonna do something else here. We're gonna figure out something. I, like I would have ran some yeah. zone read. Mm -hmm. I know they did that on fourth and three, I think, early in the game with Balaj and Herbert tossed it perfectly and they got a first down like that. Like they should have came up with a different play. It almost but not, seems, not single out one guy yeah, and then yeah. give him a jump ball. And, and there I don't wasn't like even that. there wasn't even a read. He took the snap and he put the ball up there. It almost seemed like they didn't even trust him to make a play, which is crazy to me because he's been it. the bright spot for this team. And that's this entire something season. that you have to give Justin Herbert credit for. No matter if he's throwing to Keenan Allen or Hill Jr., it doesn't matter. He's going to throw the ball in and give you a chance to catch it. And that might come back to bite him later on in his career, but it's early. he we'll gives see. guys chances. Mm -hmm. And you got to like that because if it's there, he's going to take it. But this is his four 300-yard passing game, and he's 1-3 in, in them. He has a 105 quarterback rating, and they're 1-6. I'll good. say this, though. 
quarterback play is the most important thing in the and NFL. And it's not their problem. They found their guy, and they have a lot of good pieces around they him. They still have a lot of problems to deal with, even but with the quarterback play. I, I, I think that they're in a good spot to figure it out. They have their what looks like their quarterback of the future. They have a bunch of nice pieces on defense if they can stay healthy. And they have a couple of nice pieces on offense, too. I think health has been a big thing for them this season. Coaching has been a big problem. Those two things are fixable going into next year. You bring in a couple of free agents and, and a solid draft class, and you're competing next year. The biggest problem for them is that the Chiefs are at the, at the top of that division. I think the biggest problem for them is is finding the right coach. Yeah, and that's because that's something a lot team. of teams mm-hmm. whiff on. That's the thing that we're stressing about as Jet fans moving into this offseason. Because having bringing in the wrong coach can really set you it back. Sets you back years. multiple years. Mm-hmm. Because especially if your team, you know, is a little uh, stubborn on thinking their guy is the right guy after it's been shown he's not, you know, that could set you back three or four years, and that's Justin Herbert's entire rookie contract. But you look at a situation like the Dolphins, they brought in Brian Flores, and like that, turn things around. So that's going to be the most important decision for them is what they're going to do after Anthony Lynn this offseason. I agree. Assuming they fire him, which is seeming more and more like the most obvious decision. I remember when we fired Chip Kelly, brought in Doug Peterson. Year two, Chip. Hey, what's up, guys? You just finished watching a clip of the Pick Aside podcast. My name is Joel Moran. My name is Jack Bartek. My name is River Brown. And we are your hosts for this podcast. We want to thank you guys for watching the clip. Like, subscribe, and comment, and share if you would care to, because it helps us grow. We're trying to make this a full-time thing. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for supporting, and see you next time.